The year is now 2006, and many things had changed within the Flash team. With Flash lead Jonathan Gay out of the picture, it was a new era for the program with Adobe heads overseeing the new team of 40 to 50 members, mostly coming from Shockwave's old team. Luckily by now, over 90% of browsers were using Flash, and there was a loyal audience of web designers ready for what the new management in charge had to offer in this era. Not to mention professional animators as many shows were using Flash by now. Though by this point it was largely a different product than the Flash player product for web apps. And for what the Flash team had in store for those people, well, they certainly didn't disappoint. After a short transitional period with Flash 8 receiving a minor update in April, Flash Player 9 was released in June 2006 as the first version under the Adobe name. With this new version came big updates. Binary sockets were now supported. Regular expressions and namespaces were now available. A new way to parse XML documents was added. But the real meat came with the introduction of ActionScript 3. As part of a new virtual machine component known as ActionScript Virtual Machine 2, or AVM2. With AVM1 existing for legacy content as well. Featuring new just-in-time compilation in AVM2, this allowed for a big performance increase on some systems. This marked a massive leap forward for Flash games to expand in capabilities, and by this point was morphing into a big business. The Flash web game team by this point had become a massive phenomenon, with some highly popular viral games even beginning to be sold off for a large amount of money for developers, with a few games as high as $50,000. Naturally, this brought greedy individuals seeking to get a quick buck when the monetization of Flash portals, and now including places such as Nitro, Armor Games, and Max Games, began to take form. As such, a few shadier websites began to steal developers' Flash games in order to get the ad money for traffic. This greatly concerned not just the developers of these games, but surprisingly, even the fans of these games, often alerting them to a game being stolen with some even offering to help out. While attempts to assuage the stealing did exist for affected developers with no or little revenue, such as sponsorships, the effectiveness was limited as these and the developer's references could easily be stripped out from the files, and the payout remained rather low with many deals. Luckily, the inception of Maki Media in 2006, a way to display in-game ads while loading, and Flash game licensing in 2007, an open auction site for web game rights being sold, marked a return of the balance towards developers in the later part of the decade. While stealing would remain a problem even past the introduction of these services, as demonstrated by a beta release of Pirate Launch being stolen in 2008 before an improved final version released in 2009 on Armor Games, greater revenue would be ensured for these developers as compensation. Gradual updates for Flash Player 9 released across 2006 and 2007, adding H.264 encoding support and AAC audio support, a reworked FLV format now based on ISO, along with support for other ISO formats, and integration with Adobe's Creative Suite 3, released in early 2007, and also served as the final version to run on Windows 98. Flash Player 10, codenamed Astro, released in October 2008, bringing with it further refined bitmap support, custom filters powered by Adobe's Pixel Filter, which was hardware and accelerated, a first for Flash, anti-aliasing, a new audio codec, the real-time media flow protocol allowing for encrypted flow of Flash content, and perhaps most prominently, the beginnings of proper 3D support for Flash, a feature which only Shockwave had excelled at by this point. By the end of 2009, Flash had become all but a necessity to browse the internet, with almost every major site using it in some capacity and many Flash portals entered the Alexa Top 1000 sites, with Miniclip being the highest at number 252 and 130 million sessions worldwide monthly. Other sites like Addicting Games and Congregate were also in or right around the Top 1000, with at least 20 million sessions monthly. The licensing deals got stronger too, with Flash game licensing getting as high as $100,000 offers on particularly popular Flash games. 
In addition, some developers as young as their mid-teens were getting millions of hits on games, only further improving on their skills as competition was very intense, with short development cycles of less than a few months encouraged due to the rapid rate of evolution in Flash game presentation and features. With a Flash game convention starting in 2011, Adobe knew this very well, releasing Flash Player 10.1 in June 2010, introducing a much more robust garbage collection and memory management, added support for multi-touch APIs like a touchscreen, support for various browser privacy modes, among other things like more hardware accelerated components. 10.2 followed in February 2011, allowing for custom cursors to be used for the first time, along with a fully accelerated video encoding pipeline at the cost of PowerPC support on Macs. And then came 10.3 in May, which added measurement tools for videos and introduced a control panel, among other features. However, a full new version hadn't been released in almost three years. This was rectified with Flash Player 11 that October, with a big introduction. Fully 3D accelerated graphics, known as Stage 3D. This marked a huge jump in 3D content in Flash, as previous implementations were software-based. Other changes include a native 64-bit version, an uncapping of bitmap size limits, fully hardware-accelerated video playback, among other things. More features were added in 9 updates to Flash Player 11 across 2011 to 2013, such as mouse lock content, advanced sandboxing, more hardware support for stage 3D content, full screen improvements, and various stability and security fixes along the way. Flash Player 11 would be the longest lasting version of Flash, lasting 3 years, just like Flash Player 10. It's worth noting by this point, Adobe had begun to expand Flash beyond the desktop browsers, beginning with the Adobe Integrated Runtime, or AIR. This allowed for ActionScript 3 content to be compiled as a standalone program, as if it was a standard Windows or Mac program, complete with installation. This allowed for Flash to begin its reach into the mobile market, with Flash Player itself being available for Android starting in 2009, and Air supporting both iOS and Android. Even AAA games were beginning to use Flash thanks to tools like Autodesk's Scaleform GFX allowing for Flash content to be leveraged, especially in menus. Major games like Dragon Age Origins, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and Grand Theft Auto V use Scaleform GFX, showing just how popular Flash was by then. By 2012, it seemed absolutely nothing could stop Flash's momentum. Sites like Cool Math Games had legitimized its use in educational institutions even past strict proxy blocks, and tens of thousands of Flash games were being uploaded to portals like Congregate annually. It was a full-time job for many developers such as JMTB02, Edward McMillan, and Lightbringer777, some of the most prominent individual developers among the Flash game scene, with McMillan in particular becoming a full-on indie developer. Desktop penetration was at 99% of all web browsers, far surpassing every other plugin in this regard. Flash was everywhere. What could possibly happen next? Enter Steve Jobs, one of the co-founders of Apple. In the summer of 2007, Apple released the iPhone, becoming the first major smartphone truly competing with the desktop in terms of experience. With it came the Safari browser, the Mac's default browser as well. However, some early adopters noticed a curious omission. There was no Flash player support in Safari. As Flash was virtually ubiquitous on the internet at this point, it seems like a glaring oversight by Apple. Most figured it would be added in a future version of iOS though. But three years passed by, and there was still no iOS support when even Android got support in 2009 for Flash player. Its market share had grown even stronger. What gives? That led Steve Jobs to write a very strongly written letter on Flash on April 29th, 2010, sharply criticizing the platform for its various stability and security issues, its closed nature, and poor performance on mobile devices, among other such complaints, and told the media that iOS would NEVER support Flash. 
However, use open standards if you want to come to us. Initially, journalists were puzzled on why Jobs was so bullish on the idea to exclude Flash. However, by the end of 2011, more and more journalists began to agree with him due to Adobe pulling support for Android with Adobe Player 11.2 in early 2012 for performance reasons, exactly as he outlined in the letter. As security updates became a regular thing for Flash, more people paid attention to the program's shortcomings, and a consensus was released with the mainstream. Flash must die. But to the Flash game developers and fans, Flash did nothing wrong to them. Flash gaming was still popular as ever in 2013, with Flash Player 12 and ActionScript 4.0 on the way, and Air still supported iOS devices. The games were still getting millions of hits, and traffic wasn't going anywhere. It seemed like a lot of bio for what was just a little web browser plugin. Besides, gamepad support was finally coming with AOS 4. The future looks great, but the angry backlash continued in the tech media no doubt caused by many malicious advertisements powered by Flash, which led to the rise of ad blockers in 2013 and 2014, leading to the demise of Maki Media that year due to the lost revenue. Many Flash-related organizations and dev teams hid their roots with rebrands. Flash game licensing became just FGL before forming in 2016, as an example. And even Adobe themselves rebranded the professional Flash program for animators to Adobe Animate in 2015. Even Flash game developers were occasionally harassed for developing quote-unquote awful games. Adobe dropped AS4 from their Flash roadmap too. The arguments were working, as traffic for Flash portals began to decline starting in 2012, and it became apparent to sponsors that people were leaving, leading to a drop in revenue. Some devs just gave up working in the industry entirely, while others moved on to other platforms or fields. Still others, though, stuck with Flash, leading to some great later life Flash games that most of the Flash game fan holdouts enjoyed. HTML, the replacement for Flash, wasn't quite ready for primetime just yet until 2014. Still, there was a sinking ship, and by 2017, things were looking grim for the future of web games. Finally, on July 25th, 2017, Adobe made the announcement that they would be discontinuing Flash Player support at the end of 2020. The news pleased a lot of tech journalists, but devastated the smaller but still active Flash gaming scene. All browsers began plans to block Flash content if they hadn't already, and then remove it when the EOL came. However, a ragtag band of enthusiasts and archivists came together to form the Flashpoint Project in January 2018, serving as an archive of Flash games, among other technologies, to preserve for future generations. While initial momentum was slow for the team, the project picked up a lot of popularity as the end of life for Flash approached in late 2019 and early 2020. By December 2020, the product had reached 70,000 games in its catalog, and is still counting up even to this day. Other preservation projects formed in the wake of Flashpoint, such as Ruffle, a Rust-compiled Flash player alternative for HTML5, headed up by Newgrounds and a team of many. The final security update for Flash arrived on December 8, 2020, and finally, on December 31, 2020. Adobe Flash was discontinued. After nearly 25 years of support and a legacy going back 35 years, when Jonathan Gay and Charlie Jackson set out to make a web plugin supporting web animation and graphics in late 1995, they had no idea they would leave a legacy that would birth the indie game and make countless millennial and Generation Z childhoods and adolescent years. JMTB02 spoke at GDC in 2017 reminiscing on how we haven't returned to the ubiquity of Flash, and his words have rung true ever since. Despite its well-deserved criticisms in the modern era, it was axed for a reason after all. Its legacy should not be ignored by the gaming industry for its huge efforts to help out the independent developer.